there's something dirt from the ground up through there. Is it in front of the camera tray? Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Um, we are live from the Lower Mainland with our adorable uh, little Hollywood dogs litter. Um, they are soon to be uh, four week old golden retrievers. So they will be four weeks uh, tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow will, um, the tomorrow or Monday they start solid? Um, I think we're going to, um, eating food, solid? Yeah. I think we're going to start tomorrow. Yeah. So, um, so it's a whole new world with solid food and all sorts of good things. And you'll notice there's now a garbage can, a lid in there, just something a little different for them to walk on. And I want to point out that right now it is right side up. So it's not wobbly. It's just a different surface for them to walk on. Um, as they get older, we might turn it upside down. So when they step on it, it moves or spins around or rocks. Um, but right now we're taking things in little baby steps for them because they're babies. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for tuning in. If uh, you want to hit that share button or invite uh, some friends to watch with you today, uh, we'd love that. Um, we like um, sharing all this goodness out with people um, right now to bring a little bit of joy. And, um, and feel free uh, to comment as well if you have any questions or let us know where you're watching from um, or if there's anything you want us to talk about today or that you're curious about CAD whether it's about these puppies or just our program in general or what we're doing right now, I'm happy to answer those questions. So feel free to comment away. And oh my goodness. Is that little Winn-Dixie? Yes, little this wrinkle? is little Winn-Dixie. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. I want her. <laughs> Should not say that out loud, but I want her. She's so cute. She's super cute. When she sleeps, she like, I don't know, she like purrs or something in her sleep. She kind of makes this humming noise as she sleeps. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. Well, thank you everybody who's like tuning in. I'm seeing all sorts of familiar faces. Um, hi Ruth and Cindy, Sarala, Hilda. Um, thanks for tuning in. And uh, so developmentally these pups are are definitely starting you're going to start seeing some fairly significant changes they get more steady on their feet they start playing and interacting more with each other and um and uh and just kind of building their confidence and you know the things that you're seeing in the pen if you were on a couple of days ago you noticed that the floor was almost all blankets and mats and now there's less of that so uh, the mats that they're walking on right now are actually washable pee pads um, um, that are really nice because it means the puppies don't chew them um, the way they would with the disposable ones they're also a little better on the environment obviously so um, uh, we have a question how do their coats feel are they soft and I'm like I expect their little cotton balls so yeah they are they are soft yeah, very soft little monkeys. And golden retriever puppies have a really um, fluffy coat at this age. And then around about the 16-week mark, they lose their fluff. Um, and they get more of a silky coat. And and then, then as they get older and older and older, their coats start to fill out into the long feathers that you're used to seeing on uh, golden retrievers. So there's a period there around, you know, kind of four to six six months or so where they um they have very light coats more like a labrador um but it's quite funny as they start to lose their puppy fluff they lose it off their spine first and then the strip just gets wider and wider and wider um and so when they're wearing their puppy vest often they still look fluffy and then you take their vest off and they've got this strip down their back that is kind of not fluffy Natasha's asking, can they, can they have them now? No. Um, so we've got a lot of very excited puppy raisers that are going to be taking on some of these puppies. Um, I'm not officially one of the raisers, but um, one of them is going to be living some of the time in my house. So I'm super excited. Um, so I know right now everybody's kind of holed up and we're just chomping at the bit to get these little cuties and, and uh, be able to kind of see them in living color. But uh, this is the next best thing. 
Um, so some coats, um, Cindy's asking, some coats will change color. Yes, golden retrievers are quite interesting in that way. Um, and in labs too, to a certain extent, that as they get older, um, depending on the lines, depending on the dog, some of them get a lot darker um and so those of you that are familiar with some of our dogs that are darker um like cadence or bison or saffron who's one of our afds they're they're quite red but they weren't that red when they were babies they were actually probably more like this color but that doesn't mean that these guys will be red when they grow up so sometimes their coats get darker what's interesting though is sometimes also their coats get lighter um so some pups that you know are kind of this little honey color um as they mature they'll get more um more white or more brown coat so it's always interesting to see how they will uh put it out i think when dixie is destined to be red she's she's looking pretty um pretty dark and she seems to have even gotten darker in the last few weeks from when she was born hey trace yeah i would think so she's there's a good variation between them all. Mm -hmm. You notice, yeah, there's a lot of variety when they're next to each other, how different they actually really are. Yeah. Like, I, um, I noticed it in that photo you posted last week yeah. of all of them. I was like, oh my goodness, there is a lot of variety in the, in the, in the litter. So, um, yeah. yeah but, I'm looking at Lassie kind of over here. She's very, very light. Yeah. So, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see as they get older. Um, you know, when we look at some of our litters, they were quite red, like our, our mammals litter, most of the dogs in that litter um, were quite dark um, as, as adults as they matured. And, uh, and then, but some of our other litters, like the YVR litter, were all quite, quite light, but none of them were as dark as like when Dixie, who's at the front here, um, when they were babies, they were, they were more white, sort of like Lassie. I tried. I tried to help him wake today. <laughs> I love the little stumbly, just like I'm sleepy, but I don't know where I want to lie down. So I'm just going to visit with everybody until I find the right spot. Okay, decide what you want to do here, Wendy. Hey? Okay? Either that or she has to go to the bathroom, maybe. That is possible, too. She's <laughs> like, I don't know what I want. <laughs> Just cuddle in right here. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. We're happy to answer them, but we're also happy to let you just enjoy the sweetness. So it sounds like next Tuesday, possibly Thursday, we might get a little glimpse, but next Tuesday might be the last day for our helicopter litter because they're going out to their racers on Thursday. And uh, so um, I'm very excited. Um, I have some clients, Pat's clients, that are going to do um, a daily kind of broadcast uh, with us. Um, and so we'll put out a schedule of that in advance. So um, all of you that have been following along at this very, very first stage of our process, we'll get to see what some of the finished product looks like and and what these amazing dogs are doing out in the world. So we've got um, some of our accredited facility dogs and some of our clients um, mm -hmm. that have working dogs mm -hmm. and uh, service dogs, hearing dogs. And uh, yeah, so we're excited to share more about that. So just watch our Facebook page. We will probably, with those ones, mm -hmm. create them as virtual events so that um, um, you get a reminder um, and then you know exactly who's going to be talking on what on what day. Um, we're just kind of playing with technology to see how to best deliver that. So, and Cindy, yes, right now all of our puppies are kind of staying put. Um, there may be some movement of puppies to the Okanagan as well, but I, I don't know if that's for sure um, with this litter or if it's some of the upcoming litters that are coming. Um, we're expecting two litters to be born any day now, so dogs that were bred before all of this started, and so we are um, we are expecting those. Um, I'm actually sitting at pads today because I came in to pick up a few things, and our breeding manager was picking up whelping supplies, so that's always exciting. 
So um, Wendy is asking how long Pats has been around, and now I'm like, it's 2000, so I have to do the math here. So 33, 33 years ish, more than 30 years. So we've been around for a long time. We started out as a school um, that trained hearing dogs for the deaf and hard of hearing, and it was a partnership. Um, with the BCSBCA, so we we trained some of um, their rescue dogs back in the day um, before we moved to purpose-bred dogs um, to get the kind of temperament and traits that we're looking for. So uh, the expectant mums are um, Pads Sierra, who was from our Tater Top litter, Reese's litter. So she's a brand new breeder for us, and she's just moved to the Lower Mainland. So we're, we're excited. She she is she is expecting, and then um, Elfin, Elfin, is that right, Tracy? Just oh, like I was. You, pro, yeah, I think you are right. Yes, yeah. Elfin. I was for some reason I had rain in my head, but I'm pretty sure Elfin is right. Yeah. So. Um, and she is expecting it as well. So, and one of those litters is going to be whelped at our breeding manager's house just here in Burnaby. Um, and, uh, the other one is, is also in the lower mainland, um, with, um, second time breeder caretakers. So the lovely people that had Roma, um, have taken on Sierra, um, re Roma recently retired. Um, and so, um, she's uh they've taken on a new breeding dog and roma is still with them she's working as an accredited facility dog now um with them in their professional careers but they've taken on another breeding dog so that's really exciting for us um to have um breeder caretakers coming back for a second dog so you guys um the expected litters um yes yeah, so um Yes, uh, Katie just commented, Rain is Elfin's mom. So Rain, oh, um, okay. who was the mom of our recent litter, the Israeli Places litter, um, is also the mom of Elfin, who is expecting um, her first litter. So both new mamas. So um, we're excited about um, excited about that. Um, so the both the litters that are going to be born, Sierra and Elfin, are both purebred Labradors. Um, so the litters coming up will be labs. Mm. It's not common for us to have purebred goldens. Um, we we basically breed enough goldens that we have goldens in our breeding program. Um, obviously, some of them also get placed with clients, but um, but we um, we use the lab golden crosses a lot because they bring a really nice balance between the two breeds. Um, and uh, but uh, but we don't often have a purebred litter of golden retrievers. I think this is our first one since the YVR litter, right? Tracy? I think, yeah, I think so. It's... Yeah. Mm. Are they two now or are they one? Oh, they're at least two. At least two, yeah. At least two, yeah. So, um, yeah, they're actually, I think, probably closing in on on three. I'm just... Oh, goodness, noises. Somebody's having a dream over here. <laughs> I'm just... Somebody's asking who the dads are, so I'm just looking it up. You just have to bear with me. I don't shockingly keep all these things in my brain. Um, huh. Um. I don't know. I wish Jackie was still here. Because <laughs> she would be able to tell me right out of the gate. I think that, if I'm correct, I feel like Sierra was bred to a dog from away. And I feel like Elfin might be dead. I'm sorry, I could be wrong. Um, but I might be able to work. I might be able to look it up quick. I'm just looking at that. I thought I should. I just pulled it up in a different system. <laughs> it's a race to see. Greg's like, we need to wake him up. Bring Quince in here. 
Surprisingly enough, I, th I think um, Robin was talking about how they kind of have their witching hour at seven o'clock and these guys are, are on to that also. So they're pretty active in the evenings before bedtime. We should change our time. Yeah. So we get the rowdy time. Um, are we, I think we're talking about um, Biscuit for Elfin. Oh, that's no And Gordon for Sierra, SSD okay. Gordon. Oh, lovely. Okay, so I know both of these shops. So Biscuit is a brand new set for us. Um, so he was born in um, Chai's dessert litter. So he's now a, so Roma had Chai, Chai had Biscuit. So um, this will be a fourth generation uh, pet litter. Um, and um, Gordon is a lovely uh, yellow lab from um, Susquehanna Service Dogs. I um, mean, he's quite red, actually. He's a darker boy. So, um, so those will be some very cute puppies. Um, this is like the litter that has cat. Actually, both litters have cats. Um, so both um, uh, Robin and Ty and uh, Tracy and Greg have cats. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so they wander by and come check things out. And we pr pr pretty much have them for socialization with the dogs. <laughs> That's their only purpose. <laughs> Actually, though, I, I don't know if the last cat just came into the screen or not, but she she likes to sit right in here with them, and we caught her kind of trying to play with their tails the other day, so she she is, to have to yeah, so we're like, you get out of here, you stinker. Yeah, that's very funny. It's like, just wait for their um, teeth to come in, and then they'll get you. And you'll be sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wendy's asking when Quince will get her pre-baby body back. Um, our young girls tend to bounce back quite quickly after their litters are born. So obviously she's still nursing right now. They haven't moved to solid food. So um, she definitely has that that kind of uh, mama look right now, um, rocking the mom bod. So, but um, usually, I mean, in my experience, it depends a little bit on the dog too, different dogs like different people, um, recover and just bounce back naturally better than others. Um, and, but we try to keep our dogs very fit, which means that they, they recover quite quickly, um, after they have their litters. Um, Quince after her last one, it was probably what, about six, eight weeks. Tracy? Yeah. She bounced back pretty good with that litter. Um, she looks like she's rocking like double D's right now. So I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> <She'll>, <laughs> I don't know if she, it's like, I don't know, maybe with, if it's the same with this parent, but I don't know if she's gets kind of bigger with more litters or not, but uh, yeah. she bounced back pretty good the last time, but she just, she seems a little bit bigger this time. Um, yeah. Well, I and I think, yeah, like, so I noticed over the course of several litters that, um, Cadence's first letter, she looked back to normal, I would say, like, within a month. Like, she very, very quickly bounced back. Um, and um, little naughty cat, eh? Um, just stepping over the puppies. Um, but, um, but I think that as she had subsequent letters, it took a little bit longer each time. And so Cadence has now been like puppy free for like 18 months. And I, I think, you know, she does look different than a mature golden that's never had a litter before. Um, that sounds funny. Like you can't really tell because she's very fluffy and has a really full coat, but she just has more skin than, than like a normal kind of adult golden that has never had a litter so like particularly around her chest and stuff we were fitting her harness the other day and i was like she's in such good shape right now physically um but she just has all this skin and fluff and stuff so um it's um yeah kind of like humans you're never quite the same afterwards <laughs> but but yeah it does get stretchier and stretchier and i think actually as they get older um as some of that elasticity like it, you know it kind of snaps back to a certain extent but not all the way so but they're beautiful and in good shape and and i mean one of the reasons we keep our moms so fit is you know carrying a litter of puppies 
um, if you think about the strain that goes onto the human body carrying a baby in terms of the spine and everything else, you think a dog's spine is horizontal. And so all that weight is pulling straight down on the curvature. And so having a really nice core strength and all that kind of thing is really, really important to our girls um, and, and keeping them in a really nice body condition in terms of weight. Um, so that they do bounce back and recover quite quickly. And also so that carrying the litter is easier on their body because they've got nice muscle to support them. All right. We're going to stay on for two more minutes. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Now is your, now is your moment. Otherwise, we will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock Pacific from... Um, Calgary with our helicopter puppies um, that are um, getting rowdier and rowdier, it sounds like, by the day. <laughs> um, I saw a video last night. Uh, I, I said this is like um, Puppy Podcast Unplugged. Um, it was shared in a private group that we have, and uh, it was just fairly interesting how the contrast, because they were just tackling each other and, like, flying across the room, and so it's interesting to see how um, they have different moods at different times of day, so... And I was just telling Tracy before we went online, um, we have some brand new little bitty, bitty baby capes for these guys. So I'm going to uh, drop those off um, so that uh, we can see these guys in their cute little baby capes. So We'll have capes and lunch next time. Capes and lunch. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in um, to today's podcast. And we will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock Pacific. And uh, look forward to seeing you again with uh, our helicopter litter puppies. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.